This is Hip Figs Travel Guide on Shenandoah National Park, located in the U.S. state of Virginia. In this Shenandoah National Park Travel Guide, we provide information and show you this gorgeous national park. We'll start with a general introduction and location information, how to get to Shenandoah, and information on entrances to Shenandoah. We'll also share our own experience on things to see and do at Shenandoah Visitor Center, campgrounds, and places for food, and travel tips, of course, for visiting Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. This national park is connected by the 105-mile Skyline Drive, a part of the larger 469-mile National Blue Ridge Parkway, which stretches through the rugged mountains and pastoral landscapes of the Appalachian Highlands. Shenandoah National Park encompasses Virginia's Blue Ridge Mountains, for over 75 miles and the Appalachian Trail for about 100 miles. There are too many hiking trails to count with waterfalls and mountain summits. Park ranger programs are also offered mainly in the summer and fall. Welcome to Hit Figs Travel Guides. If you like this video then watch Hit Figs Other Beautiful America National Park videos and don't forget to subscribe and comment. This is Hit Figs Beautiful America series. In this Shenandoah National Park Travel Guide, we'll share info and tips based on our own travel experience. Shenandoah National Park is located in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and is about 60 miles west of Washington, D.C. The nearest airports to Shenandoah National Park are Washington Dulles International Airport, which is 56 miles east of the Front Royal Entrance, the Reagan National Airport, 70 miles east of Front Royal Entrance, the Shenandoah Valley Regional Airport, 27 miles west of Swift Run Gap Entrance, and the Charlottesville Albemarle Airport, 31 miles east of Rockfish Gap Entrance. This national park stretches 105 miles from its northern entrance at Front Royal to its southern entrance, Rockfish Gap, near Waynesboro, Virginia. There are four entrance stations to Shenandoah National Park, but only one has a physical address. Front Royal, or also known as the North Entrance, is near Front Royal, Virginia, off Route 340, also called the Stonewall Jackson Highway. The Thornton Gap entrance is east of Luray, Virginia and west of Sperryville, Virginia off of Highway 211, also called the Lee Highway. The Swift Run Gap entrance is the only one with a physical address at 22591 Spotswood Trail, Elkton, Virginia. The Rockfish Gap entrance, also known as the South entrance, is a few miles east of Waynesboro, Virginia off of Highway 250. From the Washington DC metro area, the closest entrances are the Front Row entrance or the Thornton Gap entrance. If you're coming from the Richmond, Virginia area, the closest entrances are the Swift Run Gap entrance or the Rockfish Gap entrance. We came into Shenandoah National Park through the south entrance Rockfish Gap, which is a few miles east of Waynesboro, Virginia, off of Highway 250. Signs are clearly marked on the roads. We plan to drive up on Skyline Drive to the north entrance to get the full spectrum of Shenandoah National Park. Skyline Drive is the main road that goes through all of Shenandoah's 105 miles. Campgrounds, lodging, food, and most hiking trailheads are directly off of or near Skyline Drive. Shenandoah National Park is open all year round, 24 hours a day. Parts of Skyline Drive may be closed due to weather conditions, especially in the winter. If the road is close to cars, you can still enter the park on foot to hike. Most facilities in the park are generally open from late March through November. Most park facilities are closed during the winter. Shenandoah National Park's furthest south entrance, also known as Rockfish Gap, is at milepost 105 on Skyline Drive. At any of the four entrance stations of this national park, there are entrance fees. Once you pay your entrance fee at any of the stations, it's valid for unlimited entry throughout Shenandoah for seven consecutive days. Shenandoah's entrance fee 
per non-commercial vehicle is $30. The entrance fee per motorcycle is $25, and the entrance fee per person walking or bicycling into the park is $15. Children under 16 are admitted free. We had an interagency pass, and if you're planning to visit this national park and any two other national parks within a year, it may be a good idea to purchase America the Beautiful Annual Pass. You can also purchase a lifetime senior pass, military pass for active duty military members, or a fourth grade pass. Entrance fees are waived to celebrate and honor select important dates during the year. Check on Shenandoah's National Park website for specific dates. As you travel along Skyline Drive, you'll see mile posts on the side of the road, right side if you're traveling south and left if you're heading north. These mile posts will help you find your way to specific places in the park which is of interest to you. The mile posts begin at zero at the front royal entrance and continue to mile post 105 at the southern end of the park at Rockfish Gap entrance. All park maps use these mile posts as a reference. Big Meadows is almost the center of the park at mile post 51. Please be advised that the maximum speed limit is 35 miles per hour in Shenandoah National Park. Skyline Drive is a very scenic, curvy road with nearly 70 overlooks that offer picturesque views of the Shenandoah Valley to the west and the rolling hills of Piedmont to the east. Once we entered the park, we started to drive up in elevation on Skyline Drive. We visited in late August, so the trees, flora, and fauna were still green and lush. There were still many butterflies and wildflowers to see along the road, overlooks, and trails. As we drove up and stopped at overlooks, we saw sweeping views of forested hillsides extending to the valley below. The landscape is dominated by chestnuts, red oak forests on the top of the hillside, followed in lower lying areas by hardwood trees like maple, birch, ash, and basswood. The yellow poplar forests are found on the lower slopes and along streams. We saw mountain laurels with pink blooms along with blackberry and raspberry bushes along trails and streams. We also found blueberries and huckleberries. The most popular time at Shenandoah National Park is in the fall when the leaves start changing color. Usually in October. Please note that in October this Shenandoah National Park is very busy, especially on the weekends. Unfortunately, we came a bit too soon for the beautiful views of rich reds, browns, yellows during this time of the year. Nevertheless, during the late summer, it didn't diminish its beauty. We stopped at many overlooks along the way like Calf Mountain, Sawmill Run, Cremora Lake, Mormons River, Big Run, and the Loft Mountain Overlooks, which were between mileposts 65 and 100. Most of the overlooks we saw provided panoramic views of the low-lying and mysterious clouds and peaceful rolling hills and the valley in the distance. It made me a little bit giddy, to tell you the truth. As we continued to drive Skyline Drive, we got to milepost 84 where we saw the Loft Mountain Information Center and Dundo Group Campground, which is the main area in the South District of this National Park. Between milepost 65 and 100, you'll also find hiking trails like the Turk Gap, Wildcat Ridge, Rip Rat, Black Rock, Jones Run, Loft Mountain, and High Top Mountain Trailheads. Most of these trails have small parking lots near their trailhead. If you want to take a hike, we recommend the Jones Run Falls to the waterfall at milepost 84.1. The hike is 3.4 miles round trip with a gradual climb of about 915 feet. The waterfall cascades 42 feet. By the way, the Dundo Picnic Area is a good place to have lunch and there are also bathrooms here. Most of the waterfalls are less impressive in the summer since there hasn't been any rain, so it's a wise idea to check with a ranger before taking a long hike to see a waterfall. In the South District of Shenandoah National Park, the main area that offers services is the Loft Mountain Wayside at milepost 73.1.
79.5. If you're wondering what a wayside is, it's a local term for a rest stop. The Loft Mountain Wayside has a restroom, a small shop, and a restaurant. Shenandoah has four campgrounds, Matthews Arm Campground at milepost 22.1, Big Meadows Campground, milepost 51.2, the Lewis Mountain Campground, milepost 57.5, and the Loft Mountain Campground at milepost 79.5. Reservations can be made at recreation.gov or by phone at 877-444-6777. Campgrounds in Shenandoah National Park open in spring, usually late March with Big Meadows opening first, then Lewis Mountain in April, and Matthews Arm and Dundo in May. They usually close in late fall. In May, when campers are more abundant, campground policy changes to a combination of reservable sites and first-come, first-served sites. We continued driving north and stopped at, of course, many of the overlooks, and when you stop at an overlook, make sure to read the posted information. It'll give you information about what you're looking at, at, and I think that adds to the beautiful vista views. For instance, did you know that the highest point of Shenandoah National Park is at the south end of Massanutten uh, Mountain? The Massanutten Mountain splits the Shenandoah Valley with the Allegheny Mountains 35 miles beyond it. Now how is that for a geography lesson? I'm a bit of a geek, so I enjoy this kind of info, but mostly what is the most enjoyable are the panoramic views of the valley. Look at the butterflies dancing around the wildflowers. After a bit of a drive, we needed to stretch our legs, so we went on a short hike. Parking is provided for most trails, and they're all well marked. A hike is a must-do in Shenandoah if you're physically able to do so. After our hike, we drove towards the Swift Run Gap located at milepost 65. The Swift Run Gap entrance has an entrance gate and a fee. You'll have to pay it if you have it paid at another entrance station. The Swift Run Gap entrance is the beginning or the end of the central district between US Route 211 to US Route 33 or milepost 65 to 33 on Skyline Drive. Central District is the most popular section of Shenandoah National Park and has the most things to see and do. If you're short on time, we recommend entering the park at Swift Run Gap and exiting at Thornton Gap Entrance Station or vice versa. The Central District of Shenandoah National Parks includes scenic waterfalls like Dark Hollow Falls and White Oak Canyon, sweeping summits like Stony Man Mountain and Mary's Rock, and much more. If you're on a hike in the Central District, you might find things like rusty nails and eroded tools which are way beyond use and your instinct will be to pick them up and clean up the park, but don't. This trash are actually artifacts of this national park's history and you should leave them alone. Here are some hiking tips. Dress in layers, always bring water, stay on the trail and make sure children are next to you and not running in front of you. Pack lightly. Use a fanny pack to make it easier to maneuver through rock scrambles or more difficult hikes and have a more peaceful hike by planning it on a weekday to avoid the crowds in the fall. The Central District also includes historic big meadows and Skyland where lodging, dining, and shopping are available and the Harry F. Byrd Senior Visitor Center. The Harry F. Byrd Senior Visitor Center is located at milepost 51 on Skyline Drive and is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. When we arrived, there was plenty of parking in the parking lot, but that is not the case in the fall, so come early and avoid weekends, especially in October. We used the restrooms, which are located on the outside of the building, and then made our way to the information desk inside. The visitor center has exhibits, ranger programs, and videos, and a bookstore. You can also get a backcountry permit, and first aid is available here. Make sure to go to the exhibits in the visitor center because they tell the story of Shenandoah's history. I found the information on the acquisition of privately owned land the most interesting. Again, I'm a history geek. Be sure to watch the Shenandoah movie, The Gift, at the Bird Visitor Center if you have time. 
But the real reason to stop here is the big meadows across Skyline Drive from the Visitor Center. If you're lucky, you can see deer, black bear, wild turkey, and a host of other animals travel or fly through this meadow. Watch carefully for these animals who may dart across your path without warning, especially during the early morning or late afternoon when they're most active. You can also view the big meadow from the large ceiling to floor windows from the Bird Visitor Center. The best way to see it though is through a hike here. Available services in this area include the Big Meadows Wayside at milepost 51.2. This wayside houses a full service restaurant. There's also the Big Meadows Lodge. Just follow the signs from Skyline Drive at milepost 51.2. It also has a restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's even a gas station located near the Big Meadows Wayside. Other lodging in this area include the Big Meadows Lodge and the Big Meadows Campground at milepost 51.2 and the Lewis Mountain Campground at milepost 57.5. We continue to stop at the many overlooks and drive past tree line canopies to our last stop of the day to Skyland, milepost 41.7 to 42.5. Skyline is where you'll find lodging in many of the Skyline cabins and rooms. It has a full service dining room serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a mountain tap room with family friendly nightly entertainment, a bookstore and souvenir store, all with a fantastic view of the valley below. We arrived in the evening and checked in to our cabin. Our cabin was located about a half a mile away from the main lodge of Skyland. Although there were other cabins around us, it was still a good enough distance from other cabins to have some privacy. Once we settled into our cabin, we went back to the main lodge for dinner and some lively entertainment. After dinner, we decided to drive down a bit to Timber Hollow Overlook for the sunset, which is sort of a religious experience. Many people were there, but no one spoke as we all marveled at the majestic beauty that was before us. The hues of purple and the slow moving clouds just took your breath away. We drove back that evening after the sunset to our cabin and stargazed a bit before a good night's sleep in the country air. I'm reminded of a poem by Percy Shelley which reads, History is a cyclic poem written by time upon the memories of man. And boy, did this evening create a beautiful memory for me. After a restful sleep, we got up early and as we were departing our cabin, we were greeted by this bear a few feet away from our cabin. We were startled but knew to keep our distance. Bear sightings are pretty common here. After that exciting encounter, we went to the main lodge to check out. For your information, we found electric car recharging stations throughout this section of the park at the wayside and visitor centers. A place to visit, if you have time, is the historical Massanutten Lodge. The lodge houses and exhibit the Women of Skyland, which documents the lives of several women who frequented the resort in the Roaring Twenties. At Skyland, horseback riding is also available. We left Skyland for the Northern District of Shenandoah National Park. On the way, we hiked the Easy Stone Man Trail at milepost 41.7 to the summit. We also recommend the moderate White Oak Canyon Trail at milepost 42.6 to the waterfalls or Cedar Run Falls at milepost 45.6. Other recommended hikes in the Central District include the Lewis Falls Trail to Big Meadows Amphitheater at milepost 51.2, the Dark Hollow Falls milepost at 50.7 to the Scenic Waterfalls, the Rose River Falls to the Fisher's Gap Overlook at milepost 49.4, and the historic Rapidian Camp Trail, a four mile round trip to the Rapidian Camp at milepost 52.8. The Rapidian Camp was a summer retreat of President Herbert Hoover. There's also Ranger-led tours for additional $10 per person. A reservation is required. Reservations can be made two weeks in advance. Check with the information desk at 
Bird Visitor Center or go to recreation.gov. One of the most popular and difficult hikes is the Old Rag. It's a strenuous nine mile hike located near Milepost 49. Most people get to the trailhead from the eastern boundary of the park. You need to get to Route 601 from your location. Parking is extremely limited. The camera simply cannot show the true beauty of Shenandoah and we don't have the words to convey the lightness and joy we felt driving through this area. We continue driving north to the Thornton Gap entrance, which is the end of the Central District and the beginning of the North District of Shenandoah National Park. From this point, we began descending down and stopped at several overlooks along the way like Jeremy's Run Overlook and Range View Overlook. Elk's Wallow Wayside is located at milepost 24.1. This wayside offers breakfast and sandwiches for lunch and dinner with seating outside of the patio or at picnic tables. If you'd like to stay in the Northern District, check out the Matthews Arm Campground near Milepost 21. There are several hikes in the North District of Shenandoah National Park. The moderate to strenuous overall run falls at Milepost 22.2 is the most popular in this area. This trail leads to the tallest waterfall in Shenandoah National Park at 93 feet. The round trip hike to the falls and back is 6.4 miles with a climb of 1,850 feet. Other trails of note include the Compton Peak at milepost 10.4. Other activities in the park besides hiking are rock climbing, catch and release fishing, and geocaching. After a long and leisurely hike to the falls and back, we got back into our car and continued driving north. We stopped at more overlooks like the Pinnacle Overlook, the Hazel Mountain Overlook, and the Tunnel Parking Overlook. The road was filled with tree-lined canopies and wildflowers with butterflies of all kinds flying around. We even saw a bear darting across the road, but we weren't able to capture it on video because we were daydreaming and enjoying the scenery too much. We continued to drive on Skyline Drive until we hit the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center at Milepost 4.6 on Skyline Drive. When we arrived at the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, there was plenty of parking. Again, in October, it's very crowded. Restrooms are near the parking lot. After we used the facilities, we walked up to the Visitor Center and there was a large lawn. There was a man lying on a bench and reading. What a perfect setting to relax. At the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, there is an information desk, exhibits, orientation, movie, bookstore, backcountry permits, and first aid is available. At the Visitor Center, we watched a movie about the park. We walked through the exhibit, which had a large interactive topographical map, and sat and rested in the lovely living room area. After our visit at the Visitor Center, we took the easy historical Fox Hollow Trail at milepost 4.6, which is a forested trail which leads to a historic cemetery. This trailhead is located across Skyline Drive from the Visitor Center. This is a really nice relaxing trail to end our exploration of this Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. We continued our drive north to the Front Royal Entrance, which is the north entrance of Shenandoah with great memories and a revived spirit. Shenandoah National Park is highly recommended not only in the fall, but also spring and summer. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.